Uh, let's talk now about uh, this um, rape crisis in Scotland. Um, the Edinburgh Rape Crisis Centre apparently had not put survivors first or adhered to national services standards and their CEO, themselves a trans person, have had, has had to stand down. Um, what's been going on there? Well, it's been dreadful, actually, and it's been dreadful for a while. And the most devastating thing about this is that it was known. And Marudel Bodwa, who was the CEO, was not at all embarrassed about these opinions and not at all about shy, not at all shy about um, shouting them. Um, th a few years ago, there was a podcast, the Guilty Feminist podcast, which interviewed Maridal. And um, during the course of that podcast, what was said that um, bigoted survivors would be challenged on their prejudices. And this is not the role of a rape crisis centre. A role of a rape crisis centre is not there to re-educate people. It is there to help women, whatever they believe, whatever their politics are, in a really, really dark hour of their lives. So what was happening at Edinburgh Rape Crisis was that politics and ideology were being put ahead of the people they were supposed to serve. And that came through very strongly in this report. And the tragedy is that we have known about this for a very long time. And many women have been to Rape Crisis Scotland who are now pretending to be utterly shocked and appalled and in the dark about all of this. But people that went to Sandy Brindley's, a group of survivors, five years ago now and um, raised these concerns. And she looked them in the eye and said that if somebody identifies as a woman, not only are they a woman, but they are female. And so now we're being told that they will have a definition of women, but I'm really worried what that definition is likely to be because past events don't give us much hope that they will have anything that reasonably resembles anything most people would 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 adhere to. I mean, we're talking here about what should definitely be a single sex space for the most vulnerable women in society. Those who have been physically attacked, been raped, been the, the worst possible attack you can have at the hands of a man, going into a rape crisis centre and dealing with somebody who says they're a woman but could actually basically just be a man in a dress and you know what i'm going to say it because not many people do and i think it's about time we did there are all sorts of venn diagrams when it comes to men who like to put on dresses and some of them are genuinely gender dysphoric and i don't think they should be persecuted but there's a huge tranche of them who actually do this as a particular fetish and when men want to put on a dress because it's a fetish to them and then they're dealing with women who have been raped something has gone terribly wrong uh, susan smith thank you ever so much director of for women scotland